FedEx nearly lost a very important package. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. More on that story here in a second. Let's start things off with one of my guitar tales. This one popped up and I thought it was a good enough of a price that I would want to add it to my collection because guitar of the week, guitar of the month, I want to see the entire set together. That's like 60 guitars, so I'll have to take a photo like Slash over here. But this particular one is from the Guitar of the Month. That's clearly evidenced by our case here, but this thing is supposed to be near mint plus condition, so that's why I thought, all right, let's go ahead and pick this thing up. What model shall we talk about a little bit? Well, once we get this shroud out of the way, it's the Pushtone series. So a viewer of the show actually reached out with like a crazy top of one of these. Like it's the nicest I've ever seen. And this one's not too shabby either. It's much better than the one that I had documented, but oh, oh no. My knob, <laughs> where's the other part? There it is. That's rather unfortunate. Do we really need to go as far as removing Les Paul's knobs before shipment? I mean, you can see some of the other ones have some cracks in it, but that just happens from age. So this must've got a jolt. Yeah, all these are really cracked. That's unfortunate, especially because the modern era ones aren't exactly the same as this. But anyways, back to my story. I was kind of hoping that that one would come through, but I don't think it was mint condition, so we'll see how this one is. But the whole gimmick to this guitar is you can swap the pickups in and out really quickly. So you just push the pickup from this side and it simply pops out the back. Now you do have to do a little bit of a quick connect system change on it. So it's not necessarily one handed but it affords you the option to have the burst bucker pickups or the P94, which is a humbucker size P90. Now, if I remember correctly in my review and demo, I think I liked the P90 in the neck and then the humbucker in the bridge the best. But man, this must've been on a display or something. See how white the plastic is here? But the other edge is like completely sun faded yellow. This other one's not like that. And the covers weren't really soldered very well at the factory. You can tell it hasn't been messed with, but it sure doesn't hold on. But it's kind of cool to see these things uncovered. And I didn't have this last time. It's an instruction sheet of how to do it. Not that it's that complicated to figure out, but stuff like this is always cool to have in like guitar displays. But outside of the pickup gimmick, it's essentially just a Studio Premium Plus. I mean, they get these really nice flame tops. There's no binding on them, so they just have the maple cap exposed on the edge. They've got the locking Neutrik jack over here and then locking Grover tuners. And the only thing that's really non-studio like of these is the fact that we get the Gibson logo done up in Mother of Pearl. So do you call it a dressed down standard or do you call it a dressed up studio? I always just leave that up to people. But the only other cool feature about these is the ebony fretboard with, get this, wooden inlays. So after we figure these knobs out, I think it'll be okay for my collection. And just in general, in case you've never seen a Guitar of the Week case, they're kind of like the early Supreme cases. They got the really heavy duty bolted on handle that's nice and padded. It's got the crushed velvet-like interior. Of course, it's pretty common to have these ugly glue stains on them, but even the outside Tolex is a little bit higher quality on these cases. And of course, they came with our case shroud. But now let's get into our main feature topic. FedEx nearly lost this incredibly important package to me. What happened is the label got tore to the point where it couldn't see the return address or the ship to address. And would you look at that, even the middle portion of the tracking number. That is just such an unfortunate event where they couldn't track where this package was supposed to go. So he sent me the tracking number and I see all this. It ships normally. It looks like it's going to be delivered on time with no issues, but then we get the shipment exception. So then I reach out to the seller and I'm like, uh, it looks like we've got some problems and unfortunately FedEx couldn't talk to me about it they would only talk to him and it looks like he made a phone call and miraculously they found the package and sent it here so I'm really happy FedEx had this around so he could call in and then they could identify the package because let's face it most things in the guitar world they can be replaced to an extent but what is in this package was 100% irreplaceable these are the original pickups to a guitar that is in my personal collection. And when I say the original pickups, it's not an era correct set. It is the original set that was taken out. Do you see what these are, my friends? These are original 90s 57 classics, which means my beautiful ultra rare Florentine Diamond Sparkle series guitar is finally going to go back to 100% original. 
So there's a little bit more of a story behind this that we need to share because it was such a process to get this original set. Because when I first bought this, we all thought it was 100% original and then we found out it wasn't. But I was able to find a video of somebody demoing this that had put the pickups that are currently in it. So I reached out to him to see if he had the pickups. And what do you know, he did. So I had proposed a trade of these boutique pickups for the original set and we kind of went back and forth and eventually we just couldn't come to terms and I had already bought a different era correct set of 90s 57 classic so I wasn't set on having to have the original original set but then a couple of weeks later I get a message from the guy who I had purchased the guitar from and he had said he had just recently did a trade deal with him and he threw these in as part of whatever they were doing so he wanted to know if I was interested in them to which we did the whole negotiation game and yes I was able to get a fair price on this set of pickups and I also got the original set of strap buttons back so I can take those modern ones off cool so what a tale from one seller to another to me to almost being lost indefinitely by FedEx. I'm glad they're here. Let's go ahead and put them in. First things first, since in the episode I cleaned the guitar, these pickups have a little bit too much patina. So I use my metal polish to match the bridge and tailpiece now. I'm not trying to remove all of the patina. I'm just trying to clean them up a little bit. But now they're looking pretty good. Now these 90s Florentines, they're wired just a little bit differently than most Les Pauls I've seen, where everything gets grounded off to one pot, including the three-way toggle switch. It also has the same braided wirings, so I had to carefully assess which ones were the actual pickup leads, remove those, and then I could finally get the pickups out of the guitar. From here, it's just pretty simple. If you've ever done a pickup swap before, it can be kind of fun once you know what you're doing, but you just have to take your height adjustment springs off, and then make sure the orientations of your pickups are correct for the rings. Trust me, when you're learning, and even when you're experienced, you'll make the mistake and put the pickup in upside down. But everything was good this time, and a little bit of soldering magic later, we are back in business. Would you like to let me know how I did? If you opened this and were trying to verify originality, would you say everything is stock? Personally, in my opinion, no. You can definitely see this one's been touched up. Maybe the solder work could look better, but I didn't add any new solder. It was just what was already on here. But the original factory solder work isn't all that clean either, so I think the untrained eye would be fooled. And I also got those original strap buttons on here. That always bothered me that those brand new chrome ones look too nice. These ones have a nice dulled in factor to them and are the very original ones. So this is back to 100% stock, save some solder work. This thing is looking beautiful again. I almost had a moment of weakness and sold this guitar because it's like, ah, I'll never have the original set. But I'm glad that A, I hunted out a different set and then the original original set happened just to come and fall into my hands. But let's go ahead and make sure I did it right and get a brief tone sample. <laughs> Yep, that sounds good to me. If you're interested in these boutique pickups, feel free to message me about them or I might have them on my website, drogglysguitarshow.com. And now let's come over here to see what are in these two boxes. This is another one slated for my personal collection as I try to piece together a colored set because I just think stuff like that is cool and getting the whole group photos. And even though there's already a group photo on this one on the internet, it was from Gibson Custom Shopper and Dealer, but it's a cool model from 2018. So I'm interested in just having the complete set anyway. But my friends, I received another copyright strike on a video, which I'm not the best guitar player. So usually I can get around the system, but that's why I try not to play too many cover songs because sometimes for the 20 second crappy rendition that I do, they want to take my whole 18 minutes video away from me for that. So if you go back to this SG video and you wonder why you can't hear that audio anymore, it's because we had to mute it. So unfortunately, that means Queen songs, heavily protected. Megadeth is another one that gives me issues. Katy Perry songs, don't do that. And definitely, definitely do not even play two notes of <laughs> Hendrix. But Metallica, they're just fine. I love playing Metallica riffs on the show because I'm either playing them too badly that they don't care or they're just cool with it, which I'd love to believe it's the latter. But let's go ahead and see what color Bohemian SG I got. This is the spice one. It was the one I was kind of talking down upon in the video saying it's probably the least unique color out of the entire run, but there was one for sale at an okay price that I was able to kind of work a deal on. <laughs> a whole bunch of drama behind that. But we won't get too into that, but this is a Bohemian SG. 
Spice, uh, in person, it just kind of looks like a faded red. I think that's the best way to put it. I don't think I need to do a separate review and documentation of this color. So this one's great for somebody who doesn't necessarily want a crazy flashy color on their SG, but still wants the Super 74 pickups, which sound phenomenal on these things. But this thing was sold to me as mint condition, and unfortunately there's like some chipping going along the edge of the fingerboard. Like it's not too major, it's just a few areas up here. You can see what I'm talking about. That's why you buy from me. I disclose stuff like this and not just say everything's mint condition. So although I would like a complete set of Bohemians, I think I would sell this if somebody's interested. Or I would trade for the blue one, because I really want blue, green, and the next one that we're about to unbox. That's right, my friends, we've got two Bohemians. I nicknamed this box Lil Animal. While I unbox it here, do you think you can guess what color it is out of the five? Take a minute to ponder on that while I tell you a story. This Bohemian SG actually came from the guy that I bought the original green one from. I tried to buy both at the same time, but it came down to just a couple hundred dollars difference, and it's like, well, you know, I really want the green one. This other one I wasn't 100% sure about, but it kind of grew on me. But PayPal gift, I only suggest using that if you fully trust somebody. And since that was basically what our difference was, after seeing his pack job and care, attention to detail on that first one, I felt I could trust this guy. And secondly, because his pack jobs are phenomenal. <laughs> because it's not necessarily do you trust the person to send it, it's do you trust them if something goes wrong during transit? Will they make it up to you? Will they refund your money? So that was a calculated risk on my end this time, but so far so good. As long as there's a cool guitar in here, we're fantastic. All right, so Lil Animal is short for Mink. That's the color that they call this. It's kind of a boring brown, but I like boring browns. You got a nice like whitish grain fill. Yeah, I think for my Bohemian collection, I'll, I'll be happy with blue, green, and mink. The yellow and red one, they're definitely not my favorites, but this one's definitely the solid number three out of the five collection series. It kind of reminds me of the rust finish that we had documented in this episode, except for it's not quite as golden, definitely more of those brown hues. But this neck does have a nice light dancing figuring effect, so I'm very happy with this purchase. Both of the guitars I got from this guy have been pretty solid, but definitely let me know if anybody has a blue one that they're looking to get rid of so I can have my top three set. Because I don't have a lot of SGs in my collection, Collection, but these, they, they speak to me. Definitely looks like they age the tuners a little bit more heavily on this particular model though, because these naturally have that light VOS job to them. You especially tell it on the pickups, but those tuners definitely a bit more extreme. Next, we have a mystery package. I'm not entirely too sure what's in here. Oh, now I remember. This is something for my new old stock parts collection. So this is more like 90s, early 2000s, but it's a three-way toggle switch. When I tell you guys I don't pay much for this type of stuff, I got this for 20 bucks on an eBay auction. I thought that was very fair. In fact, I got it just for slightly over brand new sticker price. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, just that switch tip is worth that to me. But again, I just think it's fun to have all these because it's going to look great in a display one day. And our final package of the night is actually part of my guitar forwarding service, except for this isn't a guitar. So what is it? Let's find out. It was kind of one of the more strange requests I've ever got through my forwarding service, because I offer like a guitar forwarding that is a large item, and then I offer a small item forwarding service. And uh, they, they wanted this car part that apparently the seller wouldn't ship internationally, and I was their only hope. Apparently it regulates the airbags or something like that to a 2009 Pontiac or something. Yeah, sure, I can forward it for you if you really want me to. <laughs> and I thought it'd be worth just a slight mention. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.